another video. If you aren't familiar with me, I am Baker Betty, and I'm a professional baking instructor, and my goal is always to help you feel more confident in your baking, so I hope you will stick around here for a little while and subscribe. Now, in today's video, we are going to dive into the topic of making pie crust from scratch. We are finally in the fall season, as you can see by my new fall display behind me, and we are in the season of making pies. Apples are in season, we're getting closer to the holidays, and I hear people say all the time that they're really intimidated by making pie crust at home. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step today. I promise it is not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice, and I'm going to demonstrate two different pies for you today. We are going to make one pie crust where we are going to bake the crust without the filling in it, and that's something you would do for something like a cream pie or a custard pie. And then the second pie, I am going to show you how to make a double crust. So I'm gonna make an apple berry pie and we're gonna have a top crust over the top of that pie. That's something you would do for most fruit pies. So we're not diving in deep into the actual fillings today. We're really focusing on making the actual crust. You can use this recipe really for any pie you wanna make, but the full written recipes are linked down in the description box if you do want to make either of the pies I am making today. And there's also a link for the full written recipe for the actual crust. So let's go ahead and dive into today's video tutorial. Okay, so you need very few ingredients to make a basic pie crust. All you need is all-purpose flour, you're gonna want some salt, and then you need some solid fat. Now, I am using both shortening and butter in my pie crust recipe. I usually use a combination of the two. And the reason why I like the combination is I really love the flavor of butter in a pie crust. Of course, it gives that wonderful buttery flavor, but an all butter pie crust does tend to shrink a little bit. So I like to use also a little bit of shortening in the pie crust. That's going to help our crust hold its shape a little bit better. It doesn't have any water content in it like butter does. So there's no water to evaporate out of it, which is going to help our pie crust hold its shape a little bit better. It also has a higher melting point than butter. So I don't prefer using a all shortening in my pie crust because because it has that higher melting point, which does help our pie crust not shrink, but it kind of leaves like a little bit of a film in your mouth when you only use shortening. So I think the combination of the two is perfect, but you can use all butter or all shortening. Just know that with all butter, your pie crust is going to shrink a little bit more. And with all shortening, you can kind of have like a little bit of a film in your mouth when you eat your pie. So all of the ingredient amounts are listed down in the description box and linked to my full written and printable recipe. There are amounts for a single pie crust or for a double pie crust. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add in our salt. All pie crusts should have a little bit of salt in them to just balance the sweetness of your pie filling. And we're going to whisk this together. Okay, so once you have those dry ingredients mixed together. Now we are going to add our fat into our bowl. And you want your fat to be really cold. So shortening does not need to be kept in the refrigerator, but I went ahead and put mine in the refrigerator for just about 20 minutes before I started making this so that it was really cold. And I have my cold butter here just kind of cubed up into some smaller pieces and we're gonna add that into our bowl. And the reason why we want our fat to be cold is because we want it to stay solid when we are mixing it in. We don't want it to completely melt and get too incorporated into our dough. So there are a lot of different techniques that people use to make pie crust. A lot of people like to put it in their food processor and kind of pulse it that way. Some people will use a cheese grater and like grate their butter into their um, flour, but what I prefer doing is to just use my fingertips. I'm not using the palms of my hand, and I'm kind of taking the fat and I'm pressing it down flat like this. So I'm getting the butter and the shortening to be in these little flat sheets that are gonna kind of get mixed throughout the butter. 
Now as I'm doing that, some of the butter and, and shortening will get a little bit more mixed in and it's gonna kind of look like a coarse meal. And what this does is it's coating our flour with fat, which is going to help shorten the gluten strands once we add the water in. And gluten is what is going to make our pie crust really tough and chewy, so we don't want that. We want to shorten the gluten strands and by doing this with our fat we're coating the flour it's creating a little bit of a barrier from the water and we will have shortened gluten strands now the other thing this is doing is it is leaving solid sheets of fat throughout our dough which is going to create flakiness once it bakes so this is what gives your pie crust that really really tender flaky texture that we don't want the fat to be completely cohesively mixed in. We want it to be solid because as that melts in the oven, it's going to create little pockets of air and flakiness in our pie crust. So just keep working it through with your hands and keep pressing down on it until you can tell that you don't really have any more full pieces of fat that you have not worked through your flour yet. So if you can see this here, I have the texture of, it's kind of like a really coarse cornmeal, but then you can also see all of these larger chunks of fat throughout. That is what you want your dry mixture to look like. I have a bowl here that has ice water in it. It has full cubes of ice and then I just filled it with water. Now the reason why we like to use ice water for our pie crust is we want, again, to keep all of that fat solid. So I am just going to start adding a few tablespoons at a time of this water into my dough. Now pie crust recipes don't usually specify an exact amount of water to use for your dough because depending on the day and depending on where you live, you are gonna need more or less water. If you live somewhere that's very, very dry, you're going to need more water than if you live somewhere that's very humid. So I usually start with about two tablespoons and then just mix it gently with my rubber spatula. And I'm not really trying to like stir or mash this down. I'm just very gently kind of folding this around to make sure that water is getting evenly distributed and then I'll add a little bit more. Now after you add maybe three or four tablespoons, you might wanna just add one at a time until you feel really comfortable with what you're looking for um, because it's, it's very easy to add more water but you don't really wanna end up adding too much water. Now, like I said before, water is what is going to start our gluten formation. As soon as flour is hydrated, gluten starts forming. And the more you kind of mess with the flour and water, the stronger that gluten structure is going to get, the more stretchy, the more elastic it gets. So that is how you end up with a really tough pie crust, is if you kind of fuss with it too much, you're too aggressive with it, so the biggest point for making a really, really tender and flaky pie crust is to just be super gentle. Now I can see here that there's some big clumps of dough forming. So at this point, you can kind of check to see where you're at with your pie crust. If you grab a big clump of it and kind of squeeze it together, you want it to hold together. Mine is still kind of crumbling apart here. So I know I need just a little bit more water. You're not going to have a really, really wet dough. You don't want a super wet dough, but you do want it to be able to hold together enough when you do kind of squeeze it together. Okay, let's check it again. I'm gonna grab a handful and kind of press together and see how this is holding together better than it was. It's still just a little bit crumbly, but it is starting to form into a dough. So I'm super, super close. I'm gonna give it maybe one or two more tablespoons and try to kind of focus on those areas that look a little more dry. And then I think we will be ready to move on to the next step. Now, we are going to chill this dough for about an hour after it's mixed together. That's a really important part of the homemade pie crust process. And what this does is it gives the flour a chance to hydrate more, and it also gives your gluten structure a chance to relax. 
so that it is much easier to roll out. And then it also makes sure that all of that fat re-solidifies. So if it has had any chance to melt or anything right now, it's going to sit in the fridge and it will re-solidify. So let's check this one more time. And yes, we are good to go. So see how this is holding together. If you give it, a, I'm not being super aggressive with it. I'm just kind of lightly pressing it together and it's coming together into a dough. It's not really crumbly and falling apart. So that's where you want your dough to be before you wrap it for the refrigerator. I am just going to dump it out onto my clean work surface. And you can see here that it still looks a little bit crumbly. That's what you're looking for. But we know that if we just give it a little bit of pressure, it should come together for us. So I'm just using my hands to give very, very gentle pressure to bring this together into one cohesive ball of dough. Now, I am making the double crust batch, so I'm going to use this for two pie crusts, and I'm going to just try to be pretty even about dividing this. If you want to be really sure you did it perfectly, you could weigh your dough and then make sure each piece weighs the same. But I think I did a decent job of eyeballing here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use just some plastic wrap to wrap these and put in the refrigerator. Now if you do a lot of pie baking, pie crust freezes very well. So if you wanted to make a really large batch of pie dough, you could divide it into individual pieces and then put that in your freezer so that it is ready for you whenever you need it. So that's something that can really cut down on your prep time. But I always say that it's much easier to roll out a piece of pie dough that is circular if you start it in a circle. So when you go to wrap it, kind of pat it into somewhat of a circle and then use your plastic wrap to kind of push it together and make sure all of those edges are holding together for you. And now I'm gonna wrap my second one and I actually have some pie crust that I pre-made earlier that is ready to be rolled out and I am going to show you how to roll out two different pie crusts. Okay, so for rolling out my pie dough, I like to roll it out in between two pieces of parchment paper. I just find that this works much easier to make sure that your pie crust isn't going to stick to your work surface and to just make sure that you don't have to use too much flour when you're rolling it out. It's just a cleaner process. I just personally prefer it. So I also like to put a silicone baking mat down um, underneath my parchment, which is just going to help my parchment not go around all over my countertop. If you don't have a silicone baking mat, you can take a damp paper towel and put that underneath your parchment paper and that will help you not slide all around while you are rolling it out. So I'm going to put just a little bit of flour down to help us not stick to our parchment and I'm gonna unwrap this pie dough that I made earlier. Now, if you did make your pie dough much earlier than an hour, like if you just chill it for about an hour, it should be pretty good to go to roll out straight out of the fridge. But if you made it a few hours before or even a few days before, you're probably going to wanna to pull it out of the fridge and let it sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes or so just to take the chill off so that you um, can eat more easily roll it out. But what you're gonna do is we are going to roll this out um, to a circle that is a few inches wider than the pie plate that we are going to use. Now, to roll your dough out, you want to focus on rolling across your dough instead of pushing really firmly down into the dough. Now you do need to give a little bit of pressure since our dough is cold, but you don't want to be too firm with it or it's going to really, really stick to your parchment paper. Now if you can see that I'm kind of alternating my directions I'm going as I'm rolling, I'll go one way and then I'll kind of go the other way. And that's just kind of ensuring that my pie dough is staying somewhat in a circle. Now it doesn't need to be perfect. We are going to trim the edges. Um, so if your pie crust isn't completely in a circle, mine is not. 
um, it's perfectly fine, but you do kind of want to think about focusing on areas where it feels really thick and trying to make those areas even with the other parts of your pie crust. So we're gonna be aiming for somewhere between an eighth and a fourth inch thick. You don't wanna to go too, too thin with it or it um, won't be sturdy enough for your filling, but you also don't wanna go super, super thick with it or it will be a little bit um, too much crust to filling. Now for this pie crust, we are going to be blind baking it, which means that we are going to bake it without a filling in it and that is because our filling doesn't need to be baked. We are gonna do a custard filling, this peanut butter custard for our peanut butter cream pie. And so what we're gonna do is bake this pie crust with pie weights in it, and I'll show you how we do that. But whenever you're rolling out pie dough, you wanna take the pie tin that you're using and make sure that it's several inches wider than your pie plate. Now this one's kind of small, it's a vintage pie plate. You know, just to make sure, hold your pie crust on it, make sure you have at least a good inch, inch and a half all the way around wider than your pie plate because your pie plate has depth to it and you need the crust to sit down into your pie plate. Um, and you don't want to stretch the crust to make it fit. When you stretch your crust to make it fit, that really, really um, causes the shrinking of your crust as well. So it's important that it very nicely sits down into the pie plate without being stretched. And I think we are good to go ahead and transfer this in. There are a few ways you can transfer your crust. You can um, kind of drape it over your um, rolling pin and transfer it over. You can do like a little flipping motion and kind of position your pie plate over it and flip it. I find that this is kind of my best insurance policy that it's not going to stick is I do like to drape it over my rolling pin and make sure that I can get it off of my parchment paper. And then I have it here on my rolling pin and now I'm going to very gently unroll it into my pie plate. And now you want to pull up on the sides and make sure that it very, very nicely sits down all the way into the edges of your pie plate. Don't do any kind of stretching. The stretching, again, is going to make your pie crust shrink. Okay, so see how I have quite a bit extra all the way around the edges? You want that, okay? That's perfect, and that's going to help us create a really pretty edge. Okay, so any part around the sides that has a really, really long overhang, I'm going to trim that off a little bit. I don't wanna trim it too short, just a little bit here. And if there are any parts where you don't have enough of an overhang, you can take these scraps and kind of press them in to areas that you need a little bit more crust. You can always kind of patch your crust if you need to. So once you have that kind of trimmed where you have a decent overhang around the whole pie crust, you are going to take it and fold it under if you can see how I'm doing that, I'm making kind of a lip all the way around. So it's kind of this tall, folded under pie crust lip all the way around. And this is going to help us make a really pretty crimping pattern. Now this side didn't have quite as much as some of the others, so I'm just gonna take one of those pie crust scraps and kind of press that in there and patch it. Okay. So now we have this lip all the way around, and now we can do our crimping pattern. Now you can do lots of different options for your crimping. If you want to, you can take a fork and kind of press it down into the crust. Um, you can also do the same thing with a spoon and kind of create like a scalloped edge, but I'm gonna show you how to do just a really simple crimping pattern. So I get some flour on my hands so they don't stick, 
And I'm gonna take my thumb and my pointer finger on my non-dominant hand, so my left hand, and I'm gonna take my pointer finger on my dominant hand, my right hand, and I'm pushing the pointer finger in and I'm using my thumb and my um, other pointer finger to help me crimp it. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. And if it feels like it's sticking a little bit more, get a little more flour on your fingers. And it doesn't need to look absolutely perfect. I mean, I think that is the beauty of a homemade pie crust. If it doesn't look perfect, you know it's homemade. It looks beautiful, it looks rustic, and the person eating it knows that you didn't buy it from a store, that you took the time and made it with your hands. Okay, so isn't that pretty? That is it. So now, because we are going to blind bake this, we are going to use some pie weights in it. So I'm just gonna use actually this parchment paper that I used to roll out my dough. I'm gonna cut it a little smaller so it's not overwhelming. And I'm gonna very gently lay this into my pie dough. And I'm going to fill this with pie weights. Now there are pie weights you can buy at the store that are made specifically for blind baking pies, but I actually just have this container of some random beans and rice that I just reuse over and over again when I'm blind baking my pie crust. But what this is gonna do is help our pie crust not puff up and it's also going to help it not shrink. So we have our pie weights in there. We have our crust all ready and crimped. Now the last thing we're going to do before we put this in the oven is I'm going to pop it in the freezer for just about 10 minutes. And what that does is it really ensures that our pie crust is super, super firm and cold before it goes into the oven. And that's also going to help it not shrink. So we're gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and we are going to put this in the freezer for about 10 minutes and then we are going to bake it until it's fully baked through. Okay, so here is our single pie crust. It is completely baked. I'm just letting it cool here on a cooling rack. I want this to be completely cool before I add my custard filling. I don't want it to melt the custard and then I'm gonna add whipped cream on top so I definitely don't want it to melt the whipped cream. So I baked this for 20 minutes at 400 degrees with the pie weights in it. Then I took the pie weights out and let it finish baking for about, I think it was about 10 more minutes to let this finish baking. You wanna make sure that the bottom is completely set because it's not going back in the oven. Now it did shrink just a tiny bit. That's very normal with a crust that has any butter in it at all. But I can tell by looking at it, it is so flaky and it's going to be so delicious with my peanut butter chocolate chip cream pie, which is actually a new recipe on the site. Um, I'm linking it below, so you will definitely have to try that out. Okay, so once I got this crust in my pie plate, there are some spots that need more crust and there are spots that have a lot. So I'm going to trim on the spots that have plenty and patch over here on these spots that don't have enough. Don't be afraid to kind of patch up your pie crust if you need to. I mean, even me, I you know have made a lot of pies and sometimes I just don't get it rolled out great. Um, this pie plate is much bigger than the other pie plate. It's deeper, it's wider. Um, and I just needed, you know, to kind of adjust where my extra crust is. Now that I have the bottom crust in here, I'm not going to do really like any crimping on the edges right now because we need to get our top crust on and then we'll finish off the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in the refrigerator while I'm working on the rest of this pie. I wanna keep this cold. Remember that's key with pie crust. We wanna keep the fat solid, we wanna keep it cold. So I'm just going to transfer this to the refrigerator um, as I make my filling and do my top crust. And then once our top crust is rolled out and we're ready to add the filling, we will go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have my berry apple pie filling made. This is one of my favorite pie fillings. You can use any kind of tart berry you want. Today I am using tart red cherries, but it's really good with cranberries around the holidays and it's really delicious with raspberries in the summer, so you can use any berries you want, but it just gives apple pie like a little bit of a 
something special. Okay, let's set this aside and let's go ahead and roll out our top crust. So for our top crust, I'm actually not going to use parchment paper. Um, I just think it will be a little bit easier for the top crust because I'm going to show you how to do a lattice crust. And that's one of those kind of like basket weave looking crusts. So if you want to use the parchment, you can. I'm actually gonna do it right here on um, my silicone baking mat. And I put some flour down. I'm gonna put my piece of chilled pie dough down and I'm gonna lightly flour the top. Now, if you wanted to just do a really simple top crust for your fruit pie, you could um, just roll this out exactly like we did our bottom crust, and you would just lay that over the top of the filling, and then you're just gonna cut a few little slits in the top so that it has some room for the steam to escape, and that's really it. You'll just crimp the sides and you'll be done and ready to go into the oven but we're going to do something a little more special today. We're gonna to make a lattice crust. And whenever you are rolling pie dough out and you're not using the parchment, it's kind of important to pick it up every once in a while, rotate it, make sure it's not sticking to your counter, add a little more flour underneath, and that will ensure that you are going to be able to lift it when you're ready to add it to the top of your pie. And for the lattice, we still want to focus on making it decently large. Um, I'm gonna kind of use this outer circle to be sort of my guide here, um, but you kind of want it to be a little bit thicker if you can than your bottom crust because we want it to be sturdy enough that we can do the little weaving for the lattice on our top crust. So I like to use a bench knife for this. You can also use a pizza cutter. You can also just use a regular knife. But what you're gonna do is you're going to try and cut as straight as you can strips of dough. And you can make these as thick or as thin as you like. I usually try to keep mine, oh, probably about an inch wide. But if you like the look of like really, really thick strips, you can do that or if you wanna do really, really thin strips, but the thinner you go, the kind of more difficult they are to work with. So just keep that in mind. I think the about one inch thick is a really good um, kind of classic look, and it's not gonna be so thin that it's really difficult for you to work with. Okay, so we are going to pour our filling into our crust. If there's a lot of liquid from your fruit filling, don't pour all of that in there. Mine doesn't really have a lot. So once you get all of your filling in there, for fruit pie, typically you're going to take a little bit of butter, about two tablespoons, and just dot that over the top. This is just going to help the fruit stay really moist and rich as it cooks so that your filling doesn't dry out because a fruit pie does need a really long time in the oven. I find that most of the time when people have like a soggy bottom crust on their pie, it's because they just didn't let it bake long enough. A fruit pie really needs a really long time to completely thicken up and to make sure it's completely cooked through. Okay, so for your lattice crust, what you're gonna do is you are going to start with one of your center pieces of your pie dough strips that you cut out. I like to use um, an offset spatula to kind of help me loosen those up, but if you don't have an offset spatula, you can use a butter knife. Okay, so I just took one of my center pieces and I laid it directly across the center of my pie. Now I'm going to skip the strip that's right beside it and I'm going to take the next strip over and I'm gonna lay that, leaving just a little bit of room between the two pieces. And then again, skip the one right beside it and take the next one over. And lay that across. Now going the other direction, I'm gonna skip the one that was right beside it, going the other direction and take the next strip and lay that across. And I'm leaving, oh, about an inch between each strip. And again, skip the one right beside it. So I now have five strips of dough going one direction. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go the other direction with our strips. But what I want you to do is to lay half of your strips, every other one, halfway folded back. So I'm folding them away from me, halfway, and every other one. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the middle strip that I have left, and I'm going to lay that right across the center, going the other direction. So this is how we're going to start our basket weave. So now, the strips that were folded over, I'm going to bring those back towards me. And then the strips that I didn't fold last time, now I'm going to fold those back away from me. So I'm taking that next strip, laying it across, and again, folding back over. And I'm trying to keep the distance between my strips pretty much the same, going all the way across. And again, we're gonna do every other one, the ones we didn't do last time. And now I have that strip, and then we will finish that off. So now we are going to fold these two back, the ones that we just did. And now I'm going to add a strip. So now we'll fold these three back and we'll lay a strip over. It's actually pretty simple when you really get down to it. I think I'm going to do one last one here on the edge, just like that. Okay, so that is your basic lattice pattern. Okay, so just like we did with our single crest, I'm going to go around and get rid of any really, really long pieces of extra crust from the sides. We do want some overhang so that we can create that pretty crimping, but any of them that are really long, I'm gonna just trim off. So now what we're gonna do is the exact same thing that we did. We're gonna go all the way around and kind of fold under and use our, the warmth of our fingers to kind of seal an edge all the way around our edge with the lattice pieces, kind of sealing those into the edge. So once you have that sealed all the way around. Again, we can just do our classic crimping. Again, you can use a fork if you like. I'm pretty partial to just the classic. So I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to go in and create the pinch. Now my pie plate actually has kind of like a natural little scallop on the edge. So I tend to, if it has that, sort of follow that pattern so it kind of naturally fits into that scalloped edge. Okay, so an egg wash is just an egg with, whisked with about two tablespoons of water, just enough, I don't even really measure, I just whisk it with just enough that it's a little bit thin and I can brush it on top of my baked good. It really, really helps your crust brown and it gives it kind of like a shiny finish. It just makes it look really, really pretty. So. The function of an egg wash is really just for look. We're also gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar over the top of this just for like a little bit of extra texture. So the egg wash is going to help that sugar stick, but it's always an optional step, but I really think it makes baked goods look really pretty. And then again, I'm going to place this in the freezer to really, really firm up for just about 10 minutes before I throw it in the oven. So now that my pie crust has completely cooled, I can go ahead and fill it. And I actually have a peanut butter pastry cream here. And I'm gonna add, whoops, I'm gonna add some mini chocolate chips and just stir that in to make our custard filling. And then I made some really, really um, simple, just plain whipped cream. And then I'll sprinkle some more mini chocolate chips on top. And that is our peanut butter chocolate chip cream pie. I'm gonna just use an offset spatula to kind of spread this out a little bit. I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge. I kind of wanna see the filling kind of peeking out. And now just some little mini chocolate chips to top it off. And that is our peanut butter chocolate chip cream pie with a single pie crust. So here is our finished 
apple cherry pie, apple berry pie with a lattice crust. I just let this cool pretty much completely before I cut into it. That's gonna solidify the filling. And if you cut into it too soon, that the juices, if they haven't solidified, they're gonna seep out underneath your crust. And that's how you can get a really soggy bottom. So um, let it cool and then you can cut into it and then you can rewarm it if you need to. So I really hope you found today's tutorial helpful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel, and I so appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can leave those down in the comment section. I will try my best to answer them. And if you do use my tutorial to try your hand at making your own pie crust, I would love to see your creations. You can tag me at Baker Betty, and I will see you back next time with another baking tutorial.